All right, well, sorry about the delay. My name is Murtaza, and I have the opportunity to work with some um, incredibly um, transformational leaders um, and explore some um, opportunities to, to look at alternative infrastructure in the city of Montrose. This, this project is made possible by um, a, a, an awesome um, fellowship management of alternative uh, infrastructure planning fellowship um, in partnership with City and, and Western. And so over um, 36 weeks, um, I look to explore eight objectives that um, in part look at how the City of Montrose can transition to alternative fuels um, in their municipal so I've had the chance to not only work with um, Abel and um, Virgil Turner of, of the city of Montrose, who some of us have met, um, but also with Alyssa Logan um, to, to see how can we um, create um, not just transportation or vehicle infrastructure, but um, transportation infrastructure. Right? So not, it's more than just the vehicles themselves, but how can we fuel, um, how we fuel those vehicles so here, here we see um, what Montrose has done previously. Um, they've had they've had a lot of success in participating in sustainability action planning in the past. Um, out of that, they um, were one of the first cities along the western slope of Colorado to purchase a diesel or biodiesel vehicle, um, and they also um, installed a two vehicle electric vehicle, um, electric car um, charging station. Um, this is in the heart of downtown. So they, they're really on the cusp of um, um, doing some interesting, uh, exciting things, and it sort of you know, hopes to build upon that. So, so the question is, we, 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 don't we know alternative fuels are, are better, right? They emit less and they're healthier. Um, well, we can't assume those uh, those benefits, whether environmental or or health or social, um, because each region has its uh, own set of challenges. Um, Montrose, being on the western slope, colder climate, um, perhaps in, in D.C. or in California. So we, we get to um, engage in this, this process of scenario planning for the city of Montrose. So we're going to look at um, an array of fuels, an array of fuel types, an array of vehicles um, to um, really provide them with would be best tool for procurement. Um, but it's not just about providing them the, the, the financial tool, right? We have, to, we have to show a full cost benefit. And so this cost benefit analysis is going to entail looking at the environmental um, impacts of transitioning to alternative fuels. So, you know, we know again, we, can, we can't assume that there's going to be an emissions reductions. We, we know that there, there, there may be. But we're gonna we're gonna calculate that um, to to really present um, the full full rate of benefits uh, to the city of Montrose ultimately because that is one of their goals is to um, reduce their operational emissions um, and then the other thing is that you know along with we can't assume these environmental benefits <coughs> we can't assume the social benefits uh, we know that transportation right um, there's criteria of right, pollutants and these are bad for um, the air quality, but um, we can't assume the same for that transition to alternative fuels. So our goal in this project is to um, connect those um, cost benefit savings right into um, with the, the um, environmental effects, uh, the environmental impacts, as well as the health impacts. So we're going to see right, hopefully that we're going to have um, improved air quality and subsequently we're going to have improved livelihood, right? Can, or, or will there be that? Can we, can we put a cost to that? Um, is there a cost to carbon? Um, and, and why ultimately is this important? In the state of Colorado, we see that um, vehicle emissions, that green bar right there, um, well, they have kind of leveled out, right? They continue to grow. Um, this is in, due to, in part due to we have um, cafe standards, we have uh, fuel standards now that require Emission uh, or, or efficient fuel efficiencies, but populations continue growing. Right as Dominique was talking about, it keeps vehicle uh, miles, 
travel also continues to grow. So <laughs> the city, again, wants to reduce their operational burden. So here's the, here's the environment, I believe, that we have to um, implement policy change for, for um, alternative fuels. Um, I'm going to begin by engaging in this, this learning process, obtaining um, best practices from the region. And um, ultimately, you know, and all of those, all of those, um, all of those best practices right from all of those previous projects, you know, we've seen that you have these three kind of levels of um, impacts. You have immediately immediate safe fuel costs, depending on how you, um, on, on what infrastructure you implement, whether it's diesel, electric, um, natural gas, you, you um, can anticipate some saved fuel costs. Um, we're going to see that there is going to be, um, as the literature will show, that there are criteria emissions reductions, um, and there's also just this overall carbon dioxide um, like abatement. Um, the connection here is that we can, the city of Montrose, um, will be able to Anticipate again that cost benefit, that that dollar cost benefit. There's that external benefit though to the city that they have an improved um, quality of life now, right? They have they've averted that um, that risk to morbidity and mortality um, through through improved air quality, and and we can anticipate, although this has not happened yet, you know, right now we have um, the clean our we have emission standards for. Um, stationary plants, right? But if 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 we see tailpipe emissions um, policy implemented in the state of Colorado, similar to what we mean what's happening in California, um, that that the city of Montrose has the ability, right, to be ahead of the game and, and um, not have to worry about air pollution emissions fees because they'll have already um, implemented this this high level of um, high quality, high standard. Reducing their footprint. So. Um, my methods, I said they're actually laid out over eight objectives, but summarized here, um, I would begin with that comprehensive um, assessment of best practices from around the state, um, including the Roaring Fork Transportation Authority, the City of Denver, um, Denver International Airport, Federal Express, um, so private public, right, expanding that. Um, that those different sectors to see what is everyone doing, how are they implementing, how are they financing it, and what are those impacts. Um, I'm going to jump into this next level, which will be um, a facilities level um, capacity assessment. So, um, seeing um, what is their time, what is the city's timeline for engaging in this transition, um, and do they have the capacity to um, implement this, and you know, uh, how can again, how can they finance this change? I want to do a full cost-benefit analysis. This isn't just engaging in um, how, how long is it going to take them to get their ROI. But I want to see how long um, or what the impacts are, again, for, for the health um, of individuals in the city of Montrose due to the environmental impact um, that will hopefully be mitigated. Um, I intend to engage in scenario planning for the city to pre present to them um, an array of fuel types and vehicle types that they can uh, implement over that timeline that they have set up. Um, um, ultimately, I want to engage in community outreach to see um, how the public can um, also benefit from this this actual infrastructure. You know, will this support um, the city's uh, or residents purchasing more vehicles? You know, if there's if residents begin to you know um, pr present that willingness to pay for electric vehicles, will this support? So I've uh, begun to uh, the comprehensive assessment. The city of Loveland has uh, engaged in a really nice partnership with their local um, Nissan dealership. Um, they were able to obtain two <coughs> Nissan Leafs to um, power their um, just their their city vehicles. So this is what the mayor drives to get around town. Um, and but these are battery electric vehicles. Um, they obtained seven thousand five hundred dollars per vehicle in rebates. Not, um, first came out, um, not in sponsorship 
um, for the construction of the electric vehicle um, charging station. Um, I've got time. Okay, so I'm engaged in the comprehensive um, analysis, Denver. Um, I'd love to talk more about this. Please grab me afterwards. Um, here's my timeline, 36 weeks of work to do. So um, this is not even beginning to touch the references that I um, have looked at, but I am open to questions. <coughs> I was just wondering where you got that graph. I think it was on your second slide. It was like emissions yeah. for different sectors in Colorado. So that's the Colorado greenhouse gas. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, how important do you think carbon pricing plays in the transition towards alternative fuel vehicles? And are you, are you asking me for if there is a scenario where we have a carbon trading? Carbon yeah, any kind of yeah, carbon tax yeah. or cap and trade. And do you see it happening at the Colorado state level or like a national level? I think some of the discussion that we've engaged in with the city is that there's a, they're anticipating on state level um, carbon, carbon tax and carbon pricing, um, which is a big motivation for them to pursue this kind of project. Um, it gives them the upper hand um, going into um, any kind of scenario. So that's a big, that's a big uh, motivation. So on the slide, just get towards the end. Um, <coughs> in the funding for how this project is going to get carried out, and how those sort of funding sources might be useful in other places, whether it's Denver or Grand Junction, whatever. Yeah. Um, well, I, I'll, thirty seconds to try to kind of talk about this. This is a Refuel Colorado. It's a, it's a big grant program. Um, there's fifteen million. Actually, it's thirty million dollars. It's fifteen, fifteen. Um, split. Who <laughs> um, knows this? Um, this, this grant program is, is geared towards um, cities um, and, and private entities um, implementing alternative fuel through, through a federal mandate. So it's really top-down um, policy here. Um, and, and this grant program actually it propels, um, propels, is propelled, right? The, the, applicant, the applicant is propelled if they have matching, matching um, funds and, and partnerships. So what we've seen um, is that when folks came here to Gunnison, um, that we have a nice partnership here um, regionally. We have many stakeholders, and they like to see um, see that going into their grant um, their grant cycle. Um, this ultimately, of course, will lower the cost of whether you're retrofitting your vehicles or you're creating fueling stations, um, both of which mantra. Can I clarify that last point you are making? We're talking about uh, the partnerships. Is there any, like, look at pursuing partnerships with other municipalities in the region to try and double down on these efforts? Uh, one of the things that we are interested in, in engaging is this conversation of a transportation, natural gas transportation corridor. Gunnison, down to Chafee, um, and through Federal Electric, um, that is this lake. Um, so there's a, there's bigger scale discussion going on. Um, what opportunities are there with a project like this to uh, have the municipal fleet or whatever technology you're kind of investing in now have that evolve and adapt to emerging technologies in the future? Is that talked about at all? Yeah, absolutely. This is um, when I when we had this meeting initially, I guess the, the idea of rich fuels. Right? I didn't, didn't like me using that word. Um, but, but we used to, <laughs> it, um, for example, if they're to implement natural gas um, infrastructure, natural gas alternative infrastructure, um, they, they're really setting themselves up for um, the ability to utilize waste energy um, or, or um, some other kind of methane sequestration. Same thing with electricity, um, coupling with Alyssa's pr um, project, hopefully you all listen to that. Um, but let's just say they, they look into um, electric vehicles, then they really have the ability to create their um, an off-the-grid kind of situation where, where they can create their own panels or um, you know, construct their own panels, generate their own um, electricity, and fuel their, their vehicles. So the um, 
part, part of the project right, is to look at their um, public works department. Um, they plan on um, actually building a new facility. Within that facility, they want to, to they have the infrastructure for things like solar panels, waste gas.